When bracing the soundboard, it is important for the student to have a general understanding of the structural requirements and the acoustics of the sound box. Rather than considering structural requirements and acoustics separately, the two competing concerns are intertwined in an integrated approach to bracing design. The soundboard must be braced in a way that, one, resists the forces generated by string tension, two, assists the string signal in transmission across the soundboard, and three, doesn't hamper the flexibility and hence the responsiveness of the soundboard. The X-bracing system originally attributed to C.F. Martin is the standard for steel string guitars today, and that is the system I will demonstrate. It is a great starting point for overall comprehension of instrument bracing. For the first time builder, I would recommend staying true to the parameters in your plans, for now. In future builds, you can make simple alterations to the bracing pattern based on theories on acoustics and see if the end result validates your hypothesis. While nearly everything you do to your guitar contributes on some level to the acoustic result, it is my opinion that adjustments to the nuances of soundboard bracing has the most potential for a profound impact. Okay, let's summarize the steps. First, we cut the opening for the sound hole. The bracing pattern is then transferred to the top using tracing paper. Notches are cut at the X-brace intersection. And the mating surface of the X-braces are sanded to a slight radius before being glued to the top. The bridge plate is glued in such a way as to be pulled securely against the X-brace arms. The tone bars are sanded to the same radius as the X-braces and the inside taper is carved before being glued to the top. Finger braces are similarly tapered prior to glue up. An access hole for the truss rod is drilled into the transverse bar. The transverse bar and the fretboard graft are glued to the top. Finally, the sound hole braces are trimmed lengthwise to bridge the area between the X-brace and the transverse bar before being glued in place. Okay, now that we understand the basic steps, let's get started. Before we begin laying out our bracing pattern for our braces, we need to cut out the sound hole first so that we have the sound hole on the back side to orient our braces to. So the first thing we need to do is mark out the diameter of our sound hole based off of the pinhole that we have in the center. So I'll use this center finding ruler here. Our the diameter of our sound hole is going to be four and one eighth of an inch. So I'm going to mark an overall diameter of four and one eighth of an inch, or a radius of two and one sixteenth on each side, just like that. To cut out the sound hole. We're going to use the same tools we used in the previous lesson to route out the uh, channel for the rosette. So we'll use the pin, the uh, circle cutting jig, and the Dremel tool. Okay, so we'll place our pin as before. And then also as before, we'll tape the soundboard down with our low tack blue painter's tape. That way our work doesn't move on us while we're running the Dremel. Okay, now as before when we made our radial rosette, 
We're going to cut out the sound hole in a similar fashion by adjusting the bit down about a 32nd of an inch, doing a pass, adjusting it down another 32nd of an inch, doing a pass, on and on until we go through the soundboard and hit the plywood board underneath, in which case then we can just simply pop out the circle we've created from routing out the sound hole. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, and that should be the final cut there. And what you have created is a coaster. Now with our sound hole cut, we can trace out our brace outline, or the outline for our brace, bracing pattern. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the sound hole on my drawing here with the soundboard itself. I have my bracing pattern transferred onto tracing paper so I can see the soundboard through the tracing paper. And I'm lining up the top here with the jointed center line and down here So line that up, the jointed center line. And make sure that's all lined up with the hole. And that looks good right there. Now I'm just gonna, once again, use this painter's tape, very gently tape everything in place. I've um, punched out the locations along each brace and in those holes I'm going to use a center punch to mark out where all the braces will be. So let's do that. dots with a straight edge. The X-Brace solves a number of problems for the builder. Structurally, it absorbs torsional or twisting forces on the top, and acoustically, it carries the string signal from the bridge plate out to the sides. Okay, so the first braces we want to work on are the X-Braces. So what I'm going to do is line them up with the quarter sawn face facing up rather than the flat sawn face. Quarter sawn face facing up and I'm just going to lay them out like so where they belong on the outline. And then once that's lined up I'm going to mark it. Alright so now that we've marked it on both sides I'm going to connect those marks. Okay, now I want to mark out the depth for this notch, which is going to be halfway through the brace, so that this brace fits 
perfectly over the other brace. So I'll use my center finding ruler. Okay, so now with a exacto saw, I'm going to cut down to the line on both sides. Um, to start my cut, I will pull in the direction against the direction that the teeth cut just to set it, and then I can start down. Checking on both sides. Looks like we're right down to the bottom. Start with the other side. And so what we want to do is uh, make a couple more relief cuts in this so we can pop these pieces out with a chisel. So what I'll do is about a sixteenth of an inch apart each, I will make another cut. Reach down to that bottom line. And now these should just pop out by simply touching them with the chisel, they crack. Now I'm just going to clean up the bottom of that. Um, notch with a file. Okay, now we can fit our notch that we just created on the one X brace over top of the other X brace and line it up as we did before. Hold it in place and I'm just going to trace out the box. Now notch out the area you marked for the other X-brace. Okay, so now they both should fit over top of each other just like so. And it looks to me like a perfect fit, but you can't really tell. So you take a feeler gauge or a thin piece of paper, something like that, and see if you can slip it under there. So you see the reason I can slip it under there is because the notch on either one of these, it doesn't really matter which one, is not big enough. So we're going to deepen those out just a little bit until I can't fit this feeler gauge under there. Now that we have this notched out, I want to mark, I'm just going to put a T for top on the tops of these, just so I a little visual cue to remind myself um, so I don't flip these upside down and glue them in that way. What we want to do at this moment is put a radius into these braces. That way the radius that we put into the braces will transfer onto the top and the top will have just a slight 
doming to it, very slight. The back will also have a doming to it, it'll be a little larger than the top. So this is a radius dish. This is a concave dish with 60 grit sandpaper on the inside so that we can sand the radius into our braces. Now I could just start sanding away, that'll take a little bit of time to save myself time. I'm first going to mark out the brace just like this. As I'm marking this, I'm being careful not to press down on the brace because then when I mark it I won't get a true line of where the radius is. And so if you see here, I marked this up just so that I could see on the ends that this area here I need to remove. So I'm going to take a block plane and just real quick shave a lot off of that area so then I'll have less time to spend on the sandpaper. So what I'm doing is I'm following that line, trying to bring everything not perfect down to that line, just just in a little bit closer so when we fine tune it on the dish, we don't have a lot of work to do. This is just to save us a little bit of time and a little bit of sawdust in our shop and in our lungs. Alright, so overall, that looks pretty good to me. Now we're ready to take this to the sanding dish. Alright, so before we sand this on the dish, I'm just going to make a whole bunch of sort of diagonal marks here. That is just to mark up our surface so that we can monitor our progress as we sand. Once all these marks disappear, then we know that we've transferred the radius of this concave surface to the bottom of this brace. So you can see, so we had some high spots here. We're, we're working those down, and these are where the pencil still exists. Those are our low spots. So let's keep going. Okay. We are there. So you can see that's a very slight um, radius that we've put into the bottom of that brace. All right, let's do the same thing for the next brace, the other X brace. Now keep in mind the notch, this trips a lot of people up because on the last one, when we marked this up in the side that we sanded, the notch was facing up. On this one, if you do that same thing, your braces aren't gonna notch together anymore. So keep, in, keep that in mind, that's why we marked T for top earlier so that we won't make that mistake. So the notch is down in this case and I'm going to mark it up. Okay and on the last one I did on the block plane um, but just to show you an alternative I'll sand this one on the belt sander. Okay, so now as before, we're going to bring it down 
fine tune it down to its final radius on the sanding dish. Ready to go. Alright, so this apparatus you see here is called a go bar deck. It's not what we're going to be using to glue these, but I want to talk about it because it's just another way of uh, gluing braces onto a top or gluing braces onto a back. The go bar deck consists of a bottom and a top platform held together by supports. The radius dish is placed in the go bar deck. Flexible rods, called go bars, are positioned between the platforms so that they flex slightly, providing enough clamping pressure for gluing braces. It's a pretty simple method to use, and if you choose to use this method, you can still follow along with the other method I am about to show, using go bars instead of cam clamps. Okay, so we need a few things for this glue up. Um, when I glue my braces, this, this is the super simple method of gluing the braces. You don't need a whole lot. We're going to use our radius dish. I have another board underneath the radius dish simply because the radius dish that I use, which I purchased from Stuart McDonald, has this sort of honeycomb structure underneath, which isn't great for getting your braces in. And I want something flat to brace against. It. So I just add a, an extra piece of plywood underneath. I don't have to fix it in place or anything like that. I just make sure it's underneath this at all times. Now, the way this works, I keep uh, some 2x4 scraps around so that I can prop this whole thing up like a table. So the 2x4s will be like the table's legs, and I'll put one on each corner. That way I can fit my clamps underneath. All right, so the way this whole system works is we can fit our cam clamps underneath just like that. Whenever we can't reach, like, like this one right here, I'm gonna switch one out for a longer cam clamp. And this is why it's important to do a dry run, which is what we're doing right now. There's no glue on the brace yet. You should always do a dry run unless you're extremely familiar with the steps you're taking. That way you can make sure you have the right clamps, all the clamps can reach, so you're not fumbling for anything when the time comes to glue. I like to put a clamp on the end, on every, on the end of the X-brace arms, and then we'll have four more clamps to the inside of that. Now every clamp, to distribute the pressure just a little bit more to the spaces between the clamps, you can add calls. So what this will do is the clamp will clamp down here on the end, but the pressure will distribute out just a little bit further along the call towards the middle. Giving you a more evenly distributed pressure along the entire thing. So I'll find another call for this one right here. Okay, now let's take uh, these clamps off and let's get ready to glue it up for real this time. So when I take these off, I don't uh, see any reason to take them off all the way and throw them to the side. It makes more sense to me to just rest them right next to the brace. I'll even rest the call there that way so when we do put the glue on, everything is ready to go. We can just grab it in place just like that. So we'll just put them off to the side. Okay.
All right, so now we have this glue squeeze out here. We can clean this up before it, the glue gets hard and then it's obviously more difficult to clean up because then we have to sand it out. While it's still curing, we can scrape it up with, I take a couple of pieces of scrap spruce and I just put a little angle into it. It makes a nice glue scraper. Okay, so here's a tip. If you wait just a couple minutes, maybe five to ten minutes, the glue becomes a little tackier and then is actually a little easier to clean up because it doesn't just make a mess everywhere when you try to scrape it out. And another little tip, if you look at the glue squeeze out in here, see how it's balled up into these, these small little beads? Those I'll actually let dry completely and become hard uh, because once they're crystallized you can just touch them with the glue stick and they'll just pop off cleanly rather than if I were to scrape that right now the glue would smear a little bit and create more of a mess than if I just left it alone and waited for them to crystallize. Now the last thing I want to do is just set my egg timer for 45 minutes. We're going to let that dry. The bridge plate is a hardwood patch which resists the bite of the ball ends of the strings and transmits the string signal out to the X-brace arms. It is very important that the bridge plate is fitted firmly against the X-brace arms and located so that the bridge pin holes can ultimately be drilled close to the center of the bridge plate. So now we're ready to glue the bridge plate in place. I'm just going to round over this edge here and this edge here, just for a look, just so that it doesn't look so blocky when we put it in place. These, these corners right here I do not round over because we want them to have a nice crisp edge that meets up with the arms of the X-Brace. So let's go ahead and round over there and over here. So I'm just going to take a little piece of 220 and just do it by hand just like that. thing we want to do is I'm just going to sand the bottom surface of this with a flat block to 220 in preparation for gluing. So first I'll sand this bottom surface with 120 and then we'll graduate to the 220 grit. Because also it's a little bit easier, rather than hand sanding it like this, if you have a flat board, or like I do a granite block like this, you can stick sandpaper to the block and just sand it that way. Okay, so before we actually put glue on this, we want to check the fit. And that actually looks like it fits just perfect to me. I don't see any gaps here or here. Um, it's usually not the case. Normally you would have to adjust the fit of this bridge just a little bit. I would take it over to the disc sander and touch up the edge or I would sand it by hand to touch up the edge just a hair so that when it fits in there I don't see a gap here or there. But this actually looks totally gap free so uh, we are really lucky in that regard and we'll just keep moving forward. Okay so now that we have this all ready to go let's set up our uh, gluing workstation just like before. 
I have my, radi or my radius dish for the top and this board underneath. And once again, I'm going to elevate the board off the table with these blocks. Okay. And now the way I glue this, I'm going to turn this around and I'm actually going to pull this up to the top edge like that. I'm going to use a special call I have here that is shaped just like my bridge plate to go over top of it. That's so that when I put the clamp on, it doesn't. It can. Uh, it has something to to bear down on without the uh, X braces getting in the way. So to get my first clamp on, the reason I've pulled this to the edge is so that I can send a clamp through the sound hole and have the clamp pull the bridge plate in this direction. All of my clamping action is going to be in this direction towards the, um, the intersection of the X-brace. And what that's going to do is that's really going to help us center the bridge plate. As I mentioned before, when you put glue on something, especially something as large and flat as this, it's going to want to swim around a lot. So if we have all our clamp force pulling in this direction towards the X-brace, the X-brace acts as a fence to help keep everything in alignment. Whereas if we had our clamps pulling from this direction, it would be pulling us off our line. So you have to be extremely careful here putting the clamp, I open the clamp up all the way like this, putting the clamp through the sound hole, extremely careful not to ding up the sound hole when you do this. Just like that. So once again, as before, we're doing a dry run. So this would go on first. And again, that, that cam clamp is going to pull just a little bit in this direction, which is going to help set the position of our bridge plate. Our other two clamps, I'm going to use the longer clamps and come in from the side, just like that. Okay, easy, right? All right, let's do it for real. So we'll set our timer again for 45 minutes. Sometimes on the bridge plate, I like to wait a little bit longer, but we'll set it for that at least. The stiffness and the angle of the tone bars affect the flexibility and hence the responsiveness of the top in the lower bout. And the finger braces assist the X-brace arms in distributing the forces of string tension out to the sides. While we're waiting for the glue to dry for the bridge plate, we're going to move on to some other braces. These are the tone bars. That would be these two braces right here. First thing we need to do is just like we did for the X braces, we're going to put that radius into these two braces. These are the last two braces that will have the radius in it. All the other braces will stay flat. Um, the reason for that is, for one, these the finger braces right here are too small to have a, a noticeable impact on the doming of the plates anyway, so we just leave them flat. When you get up into the upper portion of the instrument, the fretboard graft and the upper transverse bar. We keep those flat because we want the doming of the plate to transition gently into a flat upper bout section 
The reason for that is you don't want a domed plate where the fretboard tongue meets the body. It's a little, little more difficult to glue the fretboard tongue down if you have a, a radius top in that area. So we like to keep that flat. That's why the braces are flat. But anyway, back to the tone bars. It's time to radius these in preparation for gluing in place. So we can use this dish, even though this is gluing up in it. We'll just flip the wax paper up like this. And we'll go ahead and as before, going to Mark out, and once again, bring everything down parallel to that line we just created. I'm going to rest the tone bar on the side of the X brace, I'm then going to mark the angle of intersection here where this X brace intersects it so I know how to angle this end so that it meets with that X brace. So I'll do that for both of these. Okay, and at this point, I'm going to mark this as one, and this is two, just so I can remember. This is the top one and this one's the, the lower tone bar. All right, so now we just have to cut or sand away the extra material right in here. What I'm gonna do is take this to the disc, the disc sander and uh, sand that extra portion away. Now I'm going to check my fit here the angle I cut doesn't quite line up how I want it to, I'll take it back to the disc sander and touch that up a little bit more. Now sometimes you might have little bits of glue squeeze out in here getting in the way of checking your for your perfect fit. So instead of trying to attack those little bits of squeeze out in the corner, it's a lot easier to just round over this bottom edge just a little bit and that looks good. So now that these are lined up we're going to mark out the tops of these to show where we're going to carve our taper for these braces. Now these braces are going to taper in towards the X brace arm and they're also going to taper out towards the end. So I'm going to make two marks on each one First mark is at two and a half inches from the angled line that we just cut. Second mark is at five and three quarters. So this whole area we will leave alone and everything else is going to taper in towards the edge like that, in towards the end like that. Let's mark out the next brace. Five and three quarters from the angle cut. Okay, so now that we've marked out, we do have to do a little bit of brace carving before we glue these down. We want to carve the taper that goes in towards the X brace arm simply because it would be more difficult to do so once this is glued in place because the X brace arm would get in our way. 
The other taper on the other side, we're not going to worry about for now. We're going to carve that once it's glued down to the soundboard. But let's get started with these two sides. Now, in order to carve the inside taper to these braces, we need to stick this down to something. And since we can't glue this down to the soundboard yet, we're going to need a piece of scrap wood to stick these to. I'm going to use double stick tape. I'm going to lay down two long strips of double stick tape. One for each brace. Okay. I want to taper this down to seven sixty fourths of an inch, more or less, on the end. So I've I've marked that out already. 7 64ths of an inch is down to that line that I've drawn out right there. Alright, so now we're going to use a 1 inch chisel. You can use other size chisels. I prefer the 1 inch chisel. Um, and we're going to carve a taper into these ends. And we'll, we'll cover more on brace carving techniques in the brace carving section. Another way to use the chisel is to flip it over and carve in this fashion. It's a little more helpful for getting the initial scoop when you flip it over and do it this way. Okay, that one is looking pretty good for now. Uh, we will be refining that later with sandpaper, so I'm not too worried about any of the rough markings on that. We'll start right away on the other brace. Okay, in order to safely and carefully remove these, the double stick tape, now I could just kind of pry them off, but I'd probably get some tear out out of the, especially the thinner ends of the, the brace where we've carved. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this spatula and use the spatula to pry it up. Okay, so let's go ahead and glue these in place. Now if you remember correctly, you should always do a dry run. Uh, we're, for the sake of not being overly redundant, we're going to skip that here. As you've seen what that looks like already. Okay, so we got our glue on there. Go ahead and hold that in place just for a moment. And we're actually gluing both of these braces at the same time. Just 
the reason for that is because we are going to bridge a call across both of the braces and place a clamp over top of that. Hold that in place just for a moment. We're going to use two clamps and two different calls. So first we'll use a large call that can reach both braces and will cover most of their length after the taper. So let's go ahead and clamp that down. Now if I clamp like this, it's going to pull a little bit in this direction. So as best as I can, I'm going to try and clamp more like this, even though that might pull us off our line, but not if we're careful. And we start by just clamping a little bit to hold it in place. And then we add the clamp for the tapered end, or the call for the tapered end. And now the clamp. All right, so now I can just snug that up all the way. And we can snug that up all the way. Just for the sake of it, we'll add another clamp right in there, just because we can. As always, we're going to clean up that glue squeeze out and let this sit for about 45 minutes. That doesn't mean that while that's sitting we can't do other things. We have these other braces. We can start gluing those on as well and letting those sit. So we want to do a similar thing for the finger braces as we did for the tone bars. Um, the only difference being that we are not going to radius these as I mentioned before. So the first thing I want to do is cut, mark that angle so we can sand the angle into the end on the disc sander. Mark that one. And I'll mark each of these braces so I remember which one's which. I'm checking the fit. This one I could take a hair off the one side. So I have my granite block with 80 grit sandpaper stuck to it, and I can fine tune that fit by hand just like this rather than using something aggressive like the disc sander or the belt sander. Okay, now we're going to mark out our finger braces for the taper as it is marked out in our plans. So again, we are only cutting the inside taper, that's the shorter of the two of the two sides. So all these right here. Okay, and off we go. Okay, so now we're ready to glue.
The fretboard graft shores up the soundboard directly below the fretboard tongue. While all that's gluing up, while the glue's drying on those uh, braces, let's do the fretboard graft. Before we glue this down, I want to round over all the top edges just for look. So it has a nice rounded appearance rather than this angular blocky appearance. You don't want to round over the bottom edge. We're going to keep that a nice crisp clean edge. Okay, so that's good to go. So we'll spread the glue. We're going to use a number of clamps for this. Cam clamps. We will have two cam clamps on the ends here coming in from the side that's going to hold it in place and then a number of shorter cam clamps I can line up here. The reason I put the two on the side first is to keep it within the outline and then that way when I line up these other clamps they don't pull it in this direction off its mark. So, so this thing doesn't swim around too much in its outline. I'm gonna first just hold it in place. You can see it kinda moving around a lot. But if I hold it for a little bit, the movement will stop. The glue gets a little bit tacky. Now I have this call, just a piece of scrap wood that I cut to the appropriate size and shape. And all that does is this is a, a very thin graft and placing clamps on this is going to put a lot of pressure in certain areas. This harder, thicker piece helps to distribute that pressure more evenly across the entire surface. So that's why we use that. I'll go ahead and place that on top. Like I mentioned, put one on the end. Not going to pull that cam all the way, just going to pull it a little bit. Same with this one. Not going to set it all the way just yet because I don't want it to pull to one side or the other. So I'll set that a little bit, come back to this one. Okay, now that's good. That's not going anywhere. So now I feel comfortable putting in all the other clamps and confident that it's not going to pull it off its mark. You can put as many clamps as you want here. I would say at a minimum you should have these two and at least two other clamps, but if you have more clamps, I use as many as I can, so we'll just uh, fill in this whole area. Okay, you see how this clamp comes into con contact with the cam on this clamp? So we're not going to use this. I have another clamp. This clamp has a screw cap on it. Works the same way, just with a different cam mechanism. Let that dry for at least 45 minutes before removing the clamps. A large portion of the load that originates at the bridge travels through the X-brace arms and is absorbed by the transverse before bar. Before we glue the upper transverse bar down, we need to drill a hole in the center of the bar for, the, for access to the truss rod adjustment. The quarter sawn face is going to be facing up, as I mentioned before, 
So that means that our hole will be drilled through on the flat sawn face right here. So the first thing we want to do is turn it to the flat sawn face, just like that. I have my center finding ruler, and I'm going to find the rough center of this. Mark that. I'm also going to find center this way. right there is our true center. I'll go ahead and punch it out with this just so that the the brad point drill bit is a little bit of an easier time finding its mark. And we can go ahead take this over to the drill press. I'm going to use a quarter inch brad point bit to drill out that hole. Uh, if you don't have a drill press that's fine. You can use just a regular drill for this. So our mating edge right here is already sanded smooth. So this is ready to glue in place. So let's get started with that. It's extremely important that the hole we've made lines up with our jointed center line. And we can start with the first clamps, just like we did with the fretboard graft. Our first clamps will come in from the sides. Oops, looks like I made a mistake here. The transverse bar has no radius, and therefore it should be glued against a flat surface, not against the radius dish. Fortunately, when it was all said and done, everything worked out fine, and the glue joint is a solid one. It just goes to show you how strong those cam clamps really are. final three braces which are our sound hole braces. What we want to do first is mark out these braces so I'll hold this in place right over the outline we have drawn on the soundboard and I'm just going to trace out the intersection where it meets this brace and the X brace. And then I'm going to number, just like we did with the finger braces, I'm going to number each one so I don't lose track of which one goes where. This one we'll call number one. So let's go sand these angles into these braces on the disc sander. Now before I even check these for fit, I'm going to round over just slightly with my 220 grit sandpaper the bottom edges that will, that will go into these corners. Again, that's just so that any glue squeeze out that's caught up in that area is not going to affect our fit. Okay. This looks like a pretty tight fit. We, I just need to take a little bit more off of each end so that it slides all the way in to where it should be. But we got the angle right on each side. So let's put that one aside. Now 
All right, same thing. The angle, the angled cuts look pretty good. Just need to go a little bit further so that it slides all the way into place. Okay, and this one the same thing. We're just going to take a little bit more off of each end so it slides into place. So I'm going to take these over to the granite block that I have here where I've double stick taped down some 120 grit sandpaper. And I'm just going to fine tune that edge on the 120 grit sandpaper. So we're close to our mark but not quite there. I don't want to do this on the disc sander because then we'll go too far. So I'm just going to touch it up here and check. So that one's good. Let's do this one. Again, I'm just going to put that slight rounding back into the bottom before I check. Very close. Okay, that one's on. Before we glue these in place, let's round over the tops so it looks good. And then we're going to sand the bottom of each brace so it's smooth to get a better glue joint to the top. First we'll round the tops. So that rounding looks pretty good to me. Now I'm going to sound, sand that bottom surface on the flat granite block, starting with the 120 grit. Once the coarse scratches are gone uh, using that, I'll then graduate up to 220 grit. And that's good to go. Sound hole braces have been fitted and sanded smooth, so we're ready to glue these in place. I'm going to move this up towards this edge here, just so that my clamps can reach each brace. I place a call here not just to protect the brace but also so that when I put the clamp in here these taller braces don't get in the way. We'll place two long clamps. They're pulling in this direction which is going to, the pull of the clamp is going to help set this in place tight against the two braces. In this case, because we're not pulling into the corner, you want to be a little bit careful not to pull your brace off its mark when you clamp. For that reason, I will clamp that part of the way and clamp the other one. Carefully bring it all snug, making sure that I don't pull off my line. Looks good. All right, let's do our final brace. dry for the usual 45 minutes before we take off these clamps. While we're waiting for the glue to dry on our sound hole braces, let's move on to something else. Our truss rod access hole that we drilled through the upper transverse bar, we need to slot that down towards the soundboard a little bit and at the same time 
carve out a little trough. We need to carve out a trough in the fretboard graft. The way we're going to do that is I'm going to use a round file that fits into this hole. And I'm just going to file downward. Which will deepen this hole into a slot and at the same time it's going to start making contact with the fretboard graft right here and dig a little trough in the fretboard graft. As you get closer, if you're worried about nicking the soundboard in this area or in this area right on the other side of the bar, you can put down either a thin sheet of metal or you can put, a, put down a piece of the blue painter's tape, the low-tack painter's tape that you've been using. Um, just be careful, of course, when you take off that painter's tape so that you don't get tear out in that area. Um, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to be mindful and very careful as I get closer to the board. Okay. So, we've dug out a little trough there, just so we won't have any trouble reaching our Allen key in through the upper transverse bar to the truss rod adjustment nut at the uh, sound hole end. As you can see, we, we dug out this trough down till there was about a uh, thirty-second of an inch left of wood on the fretboard graft before it meets the soundboard. And that's about enough for me. You don't have to go all the way through the fretboard graft to the soundboard. You want to go about a thirty-second of an inch shy of hitting your soundboard. Mm -hmm.